Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. And special thanks to Antonio Arena for sharing this. To all the Catholics out there, this is not an attack on you personally. This is to show the blasphemous and false teachings of the Catholic religion and hopefully help you realize this and start a true relationship with Jesus Christ. First of all, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. We do not pray to God through anyone but Jesus. We don't talk to angels, dead saints, or Mary in order to have God hear us. And secondly, this title is an outright lie because Mary did not make 15 promises to Christians who recite the rosary. Whoever is telling you this is a liar that works for the devil. The paragraph above this makes me cringe, saying to Mary, To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. This is blasphemy. We stand sinful and sorrowful before no one but God Almighty. And Mary can't hear you, let alone answer any petitions you bring before her. This is a 100% false teaching that is not in God's holy word. So let's look at these so-called promises these deceivers are saying Mary made. Mary says that whoever shall faithfully serve her by recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces. Jesus quoted Deuteronomy in Luke 4, 8, saying that we shall worship the Lord our God and serve him only. Mary would never make this promise because it goes against God's word. Number two, Mary says, I promise my special protection and the greatest graces to all those who shall recite the rosary. No, she didn't, because there are no scriptures that Mary can do any such thing. Psalm 18, too, tells us that God is our protection, not Mary. Number three, Mary says the rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. This is witchcraft. Reciting prayers to Mary with a trinket will not protect anyone from hell, decrease sin, or defeat heresies. The only thing that will save you from hell is salvation through Christ. Number four, Mary says the rosary will cause virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw the heart of men from the love of this world and its vanities and will lift them to the desire of eternal things. Oh, that souls would sanctify themselves by this mean. No Bible verses to support this. And we do not sanctify ourselves. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 tells us that God sanctifies us through His Spirit. Number five, the soul which recommend itself to me by the recitation of the rosary shall not perish. This is blasphemy. John 10.28 tells us that Jesus gives us eternal life and that we won't perish. Folks, this list is one of the most blasphemous things I've ever seen, and we don't need to go through the whole thing. Reciting the rosary and saying that Mary made these promises is heresy on the highest level. And if you can't see that, then I truly pray for your soul because none of this is supported in the Bible. And if you do truly believe this stuff, please ask yourself this important question. If you died today, do you think you'd go to heaven? Fact is, we've all broken God's Ten Commandments, and breaking God's law is called sin. 1 John 3, 4 tells us that sin is transgression of the law. Let's go through a few of those commandments. Ever told a lie? It only takes one to make someone a liar. Ever taken something that wasn't yours, even if it's small? That makes you a thief. Ever said, oh my God, or Jesus Christ in a moment of anger? That's called taking the Lord's name in vain. How about having a dirty thought? God is so perfect and holy that even thinking lustful things is considered adultery of the heart to him. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. The penalty for sin is death, and God's prison, so to speak, is hell, and it's forever. And just like in a court of law, a good judge cannot overlook someone's crime, God will not overlook ours. But also like in a court of law, if the fine is paid, the judge can legally let you go, even though you're guilty. If we died today and stood before God, we'd all be guilty of breaking his laws. That's where Jesus comes in. 
He lived a sinless life and took the death penalty on our behalf. So just like someone paying your fine in court, Jesus paid our fine to God with his life. John 3.16 says that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son and that whoever believes in him, that is, commits to Jesus, will not get what they deserve, but shall have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ and not of works. There's nothing we can do to earn God's forgiveness. It's his gift to us. So if you aren't sure that you'd go to heaven today, then admit to God that you're sorry for breaking his laws. Admit that you deserve punishment for this and confess that you believe Jesus Christ has paid your fine on the cross. There's no special words. Just be honest with God. He knows everything anyways. If you're sincere about that, then scripture says that you will become a new creation. The old you will be gone and the new will come. You will be born again and with God's spirit now living inside you, you're going to notice some definite changes in your life. Don't wait another minute because no one is guaranteed they'll see tomorrow. We're going to leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.